Well, the title of the third talk is uh, Quantum Delegation with an Off-the-Shelf Device uh, by an author and uh, Yuming, and Yuming will give the talk. Thanks for the introduction, and uh, thanks for, for coming. In 2077, large-scale fault tolerance is considered as the reality of the hybrid of the model. Okay. okay. So, with the effort of our audience, which is very important, um, we have this uh, large scale for tolerant computers, but they are still very expensive and require um, extreme working environments like high temperature. It's unlikely you will purchase your own quantum computers or quantum laptop. So, uh, you want to delegate your quantum algorithms or quantum circuit to some cloud quantum computing company. So in such a scenario, the client uh, sends the uh, classical description of their circuit as well as the input to the uh, uh, quantum computing company and receive the uh, measurement outcomes. In such a cloud computing scenario, both the uh, client and the server have their own concerns. For client, uh, they should not uh, blindly trust the server. They should always ask whether this uh, results are correct or not. However, uh, the client has only a daily use uh, laptop. They cannot predict the results uh, with the uh, predicts the result with the predictions. Okay. So even the result is correct. Uh, how do you know the, the this quantum computing company was performing some quantum computers rather than using a supercomputer? Uh, for the server, the server want to make sure the this interaction is zero knowledge in the sense that um, the client only learns the correctness of the result without any other information. So uh, for the purpose of, for example, um, prevent reverse engineering or against uh, or protect, protect IP. So our goal is to uh, have a zero knowledge verifiable delegation of quantum compu computations. Several models uh, have been proposed to achieve this goal. Uh, each of them have some uh, advantages and encounters some challenges. For example, in some models, uh, we do not assume the client is completely classical. We have some uh, limited but trusted quantum functionality like uh, quantum measurements or state preparation. However, in this case, uh, the client is not so-called uh, fully device independent. How do you know your quantum device is always uh, trustworthy? Some other protocols um, assume the uh, server is computationally bonded and they use uh, crypto techniques to against uh, malicious quantum uh, servers or quantum provers. However, in this case, uh, we make some computational assumptions which uh, haven't to be proved to be true and uh, uh, a more powerful quantum server may be able to, uh, to cheat. There are also some other protocols based on non-core games, which assume you have uh, multiple isolated quantum servers and uh, they use the self-testing techniques to verify the quantum servers they perform the desired uh, quantum computations. However, in this case, uh, you require many servers for the zero knowledge. It was uh, shown by Guilio Yuan and Slofstra that you need uh, six servers, and it was recently proved by uh, Kevin Mastel and William Slofstra that uh, you can only you 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 only need two, but still you need multiple servers. So uh, to to tackle all those issues, uh, we propose a model we call the OTS model. In such a model, a single quantum server uh, do the bulk of uh, computations. And uh, the client has an untrusted off-the-shelf measurement device, and we only require one round of interaction. Here, off-the-shelf refers to the fact that uh, this measurement device is entangled with the server, but it does not depend on the computation instance. It only depends on the size of the instance. And this measurement uh, device is also very small. You can imagine it only has a uh, login buttons, which can specify uh, constantly many qubits you want to measure. 
and uh, we do not assume this um, management device is trusted. Uh, instead, we develop new self-tests self -tests to uh, verify that the server and the off-the-shelf device, they, have, they share the enough entanglement and that they can perform commanded quantum measurements. Okay, so let me give you an overview. Uh, suppose now you have a quantum algorithm which can track typhoon, which is your uh, circuit C, and you want to know whether your uh, Saturday flight will be affected. This is your instant X. And you want to delegate this computation task to IBM, let's say. So in the setup phase, uh, you first purchase this off-the-shelf device from the server based on your needs, based on the size of the computation. In the first step, uh, you do this uh, circuit to Hamiltonian construction, and you send the uh, classical description of this Hamiltonian to the server. Then server uh, builds actual quantum systems and compute the uh, ground energy and the ground state and teleport the ground state through the shared EPR pairs um, within uh, the off-the-shelf device and the quantum state. Then the client uh, presses some buttons on the off-the-shelf device based on the teleportation keys from the server and the measurement statistics from the client, uh, they can uh, estimate the ground energy of this uh, Hamiltonian. And uh, this uh, uh, Hamil uh, the ground energy is low if and only if this is an uh, accepting instance. Okay. So here, this is just a, a, an overview. And uh, uh, I will refer to the step three as the uh, energy test or the computational run, computation run of this protocol. Of course, uh, this is not enough to verify the computation. We actually need to incorporate a test run with the computation. So the trick is, uh, with some probability, you will conduct the computation run. With some probability, you will add a test run. Importantly, the computation run and test run are distinguishable to the off-the-shelf device. And uh, if your off-the-shelf device is functional and your quantum server is honest, then uh, they can pass. Uh, so this is the uh, necessary and efficient condition to pass to the test run. Then you can claim that uh, the output of the computation run must be correct. So you know they are doing the uh, commanded things. However, um, if the uh, off-the-shelf device and the server, they cannot pass the test run, then you know either the uh, off-the-shelf device is broken or the server is malicious. Now, and so you can detect um, the, the malicious behavior. So now our task boils down to design a, to design a, a protocol that based on the measurement statistics, uh, verify that the off-the-shelf device, uh, it indeed faithfully performs commanded measurements and it shares an adequate amount of uh, EPR pairs with the quantum server. Let me first give you a toy example. Uh, in this uh, well-known CHSH game, there are two players, each receive a bit and output a bit. They win this game if and only if uh, A plus B, the output, uh, is equal to the X or of the inputs. And the uh, series sum shows that uh, the maximum winning probability of this CHSH game is roughly uh, 0.85. A cool thing is um, if uh, the two players can achieve this uh, optimal value, then after some linear algebras, you would say um, the, uh, the shared state must be the, an EPR pair and uh, the uh, measurement operators performed by Alice and Bob, they must be a poly operator, poly measurements. And uh, so this phenomenon is known as the, the self-testing for quantum system. This self-test is also robust in the sense that um, if you can only have the uh, near optimal winning probability, you can still claim that your state must be very close to an EPR pair and uh, your measurement operators are essentially uh, poly operators. So the punchline is um, during the CHSH game, if you observe that the two players win the game, then you would have high statistical confidence to claim that 
uh, they do share an EPR pair and they can perform commanded poly measurements. Of course, this CHSH only self has one EPR pair and the poly measurements are one qubit. For our purpose, we need a self test to certify um, high entanglements and maybe breeds of polys. So, uh, Natarajan and uh, Vidic uh, invented a nice self test called uh, poly breeding test. Uh, this self test can certify uh, an EPR pairs by measuring all the, all the n qubits. And uh, based on this result, uh, Alex Guillo has this uh, brilliant idea of, uh, uh, of uh, quantum delegation. Uh, so, um, so this is a two server scenario. Uh, so those two servers, they share EPR pairs. During the energy test, the computation room um, one of the server teleport the ground state to the other server and the other server measure their ground states. And based on the uh, measurement statistics from the first server and the teleportation keys from the second server, the uh, client can uh, estimate the ground energy and know whether this is a yes instance or not. And uh, they use this uh, poly breeding test to certify um, you do have um, enough entanglement and uh, the uh, the first server, they uh, perform the measurement operators correctly, and the second server, they perform uh, the bare measurements for the teleportation. Intuitively speaking, uh, in this scenario, uh, the entire uh, ground state has been teleported, and uh, the client receives many information. Uh, here, uh, they receive a poly and bit answers. Okay. And uh, the uh, teleportation keys, uh, they are encoded in a polyon bit string. So intuitively, it's very hard to make this uh, protocol zero knowledge. Okay. Uh, let me remind you, the intuition of zero knowledge is uh, the, the server want to consider their inner working. So to tackle this obstruction, uh, we give a new energy test. In this energy test, the uh, server only need to teleport uh, a small portion of the ground state, uh, indeed a constant many bit of the uh, ground state. And to, uh, in, to incorporate the test run uh, and the, with the computational run, uh, we gave a new self-test called low-weight polybridic test. So in this uh, self-test, um, the, uh, the client only requires the measurement device measure constantly many qubits. So the uh, question line is log n and answer line is constant. And then we show that this uh, low weight polybreeding test uh, certifies an EPR pairs by only measuring constantly many qubits, uh, six qubits indeed. Okay. And along the way, uh, we, we construct, we prove a new version, an enhanced version of the well-known uh, Gawa-Sotami theorem to, to prove that uh, this, is, this low weight polybreeding test is indeed a, a robust salt testing. So the idea is the uh, canonical optimal strategy for low weight poly breeding test forms um, a representation of poly group or wire Heisenberg group, group, which is a finitely presented group. And any near optimal strategy, uh, the, uh, they satisfy all those relations in this group approximately. Gawastami uh, theorem tells you uh, if you satisfy all those relations approximately, then, then you can find the exact representation nearby. Uh, so this exact representation is the thing you want to test. And for the purpose of zero knowledge, we use the techniques called the uh, simulatable codes uh, given by uh, Guilio Yuan Slofstra to show that uh, in this energy test, uh, because you only teleport a small amount of um, qubits, then uh, it's very easy to, uh, to simulate the uh, reduced density matrix. Based on those uh, technical contributions, we show that any polynomial time quantum computation, aka BQP, has a zero knowledge verifiable delegation protocol in the OTS model. So you can delegate all efficient quantum computation using this protocol. Here, um, if, you, if you think this uh, off the shelf device um, as a separate quantum prover, then um, and, uh, you can, you can replace the BQP circuit with the QMA verification circuit. 
then you can think this is an interactive proof system with two provers. By scaling, the, scaling uh, up the techniques, uh, we show that every language uh, in QMA has a two prover, one round, zero knowledge interactive proof system. Uh, if you were in Kieran's talk on Tuesday, you would know actually uh, everything in MIP star has a two prover, one round, perfect zero knowledge uh, protocol. Uh, compared to their results, uh, the OTS uh, interactive proof system uh, is proof efficient in the sense that one of the prover is very elementary. It's just a measurement device and measure constantly many qubits. And uh, the other one uh, only needs a QMA witness uh, for the completeness. So uh, there are a few uh, follow-up directions I'm interested in. The first is, um, uh, you can you can think this uh, off the shelf device as a complexity class okay so uh, so it contains all the languages that can be uh, determined by the uh, off the shelf uh, interactive proof system and the question is now we know qma is contained in this class uh, what is what is the um, power of this class okay. so we conjecture that uh, maybe this contains or uh, next and uh, uh, the second direction is, uh, is this uh, proof of uh, quantum knowledge. So this is an ex extension of uh, zero knowledge. So this concept refers to the fact that the verifier, the client, they further um, has the uh, knowledge of the fact that, uh, further uh, becomes convinced of the fact that uh, the, the prover, the server, has the knowledge of an accepting instance. Uh, we, we think um, by modifying the self-testing part, uh, we can make OTS also satisfy this uh, proof of quantum knowledge property. Another one is, um, can we find some uh, new self-tests, which is uh, very efficient, meaning that you have a log n bit question, uh, constant bit uh, answer, and achieve high robustness, maybe a constant robustness, robustness which is independent of uh, the the number of EPR pairs you want to test, and this may lead to the uh, to a proof of a game version of quantum uh, PCP. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, other questions? Thank you for the talk. Uh, you were mentioning about uh, self-testing n EPR pair using just uh, six qubit uh, thing. Can you share more details on it and how robust is the procedure? Uh, yeah, this one. Uh, yeah, so this is not the only one using uh, like only constantly many uh, measurements to certify n EPR pairs. Like um, if you do this so-called uh, uh, CHSH2 game, or uh, so, so the basic idea is um, every time uh, you just uh, uh, randomly select like maybe two qubits mm -hmm. and play something uh, close to CHSH. And uh, you, you can show that uh, this is a robust self-testing. However, the robustness is much uh, worse than the uh, polybreeding test. You can only achieve uh, like uh, inverse of poly and robustness. Uh, and like, what is the significance of uh, this low weight uh, PGT in this uh, scenario? Uh, okay, so as I mentioned, uh, there are many new, uh, many self tests that can achieve the uh, same uh, quantity, but uh, uh, this low weight polybreeding test can be incorporated with this uh, energy test. Okay. So the, the important thing is the off the shelf device yep. cannot tell uh, whether uh, this is a test wrong or a computation wrong. Otherwise, they can they can cheat in computation run, but pretend to be honest in test run. And uh, the significance of low weight polybreeding test here is uh, it can be uh, cooperated with the uh, energy test. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, we have more time for questions. Any?
Uh, thank you for the nice talk. My question is, your protocol works by taking a quantum circuit, mapping it to a local Hamilton, and then delegating the computation. And I wonder how is it if the computation is to be performed on quantum data? So, for example, assume that the the user also has some other oracle that has some quantum thing that he somehow wants to get to the other side. Is there an extension of the protocol that can incorporate quantum inputs? Uh, I think there are a few protocols that um, the client has the ability uh, to, for example, uh, measure or uh, or uh, uh, prepare some uh, states. Yeah, but then the, I mean, in the sense that the user has an unknown quantum data. So he cannot tell the server to prepare this or that state. Uh, well, uh, I haven't thought about this. Okay, but that's a that's a good question. Thanks a lot. More question. So if not, let's thank all the speakers for the session again.